really about a year into our marriage, we thought, okay, let's start trying to have kids. And it was easy because my husband has a, a sibling set that sort of were our pioneers in our infertility. And so Jason knew there was a chance that he would have the same infertility problem that his brother has. And so he went and got tested. So we knew within a month of us wanting to start a family that um, he has what's called absence of the vas deferens, which means that his sperm can't get out. There's no tube. So he, he laughs and says it's like crossing the Grand Canyon on a bike. <laughs> it's just not, it's not gonna happen. So we really did know within the first year of our marriage that the only chance that we were gonna bear children naturally was to do in vitro fertilization. And Jason's brother and sister had done it five times and it was successful once. So we knew that there was a large fee involved. We knew that it was hard on your body physically and we knew that you had to have specialists to do it. And at the time, I mean, this was 11, 12 years ago, there were only two people in Utah that did it. A guy in Sandy named Dr. Heiner and then the University of Utah had five or six doctors that teamed, that were a team. So we went to University of Utah and uh, did two IVF attempts. And the first one, when it didn't work, we were completely devastated. Just, you put all your eggs in one basket <laughs> and you spend tens of thousands of dollars and you... You want to have a family. And really there's no way to describe the doctor calling you and saying, you did all this work. We're glad that you did. We don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't work. And they go, well, we can try again. So call us when you're ready to try again. So we really mourned for a little bit. And then we decided to try again. We had some frozen embryos. And so we did it again and it didn't work again. And after that phone call, you really just have a hard time processing what's next? Where do we go from here? Knowing that that's your only option. There are lots of other people in their infertility where they're told, you know, you've got all these options, we can try different things, where we had to jump right into the heavy stuff. I mean, we didn't get to gradually move into the big stuff. We moved right into, you get to spend $12,000 now and <laughs> poke needles with your body that are this long and, you know, basically for three months, shoot yourself full of hormones. And I was hormonal and had gained a bunch of weight and my body was a complete wreck from the hormones. My, I have arthritis and it just, it killed my lower back. Just my, it just, I, so I was in a lot of physical pain, um, but the emotional pain was probably the worst. And then, and then you have this financial loss of, <laughs> We could have just bought a brand new car <laughs> and we get nothing for it. And so it was just all, all hard. So I'd go to work every day and go, well, this is nice. <laughs> I'd rather be doing something else. But here I am at work every day and I just, it was hard. And it was a, it was a very defining moment for me of who am I? What does he want from me? What can I do to fulfill my mission and purpose on earth when I don't see any of those things happening. I don't see any of the things that I thought would happen in my life coming to me.